Johnny, good to see you. Your first Six Nations launch as Ireland captain. First of all, how are you feeling? How's the how's the injury going? Yeah, coming along really well now. Um, so as we said, uh, when I met the specialist in London, we said a target of, of eight weeks was a real safe and uh, good target to set and uh, everything's gone a plan. Hopefully now get on the pitch uh, tomorrow with the boys and, and train fully and hopefully that'll go, go well. Officially Ireland captain now, which is brilliant. Congratulations on that. Um, I remember when we chatted to you on the last time you were on the podcast, you said that one of your heroes you looked up to was Roy Keane. And I think it'd be absolutely fair to say that you probably have similar characteristics, massively competitive leaders on and off the pitch. Um, Perhaps one of the negatives, and I'd like to get your opinion on this, would be the way in which Roy Keane was with the referees. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope rugby is slightly different to the football in that regard. Slightly different, but I guess that's a part which you're going to have to now deal with. Um, how do you see that relationship going with, with refs and the way in which you are yeah. in terms of being a competitor on the pitch? Because you are physically competitive. Yeah, and that's the, the, the bit that can, obviously, in the heat of battle, it can boil over, but as... I've learned some some good lessons with Leinster over the last few years yeah. doing that role, and uh, I think when I've had the role, yeah, I've got a bigger responsibility to to do that in the right way, you know. But I now have sort of access, so he won't. Yes. He can't tell me to, to go <laughs> to go away, uh, so I can have a conversation with him. So I think that was obviously. I'm not. I wasn't the captain at times yeah. when I was, you know, maybe in people's eyes letting myself down with them. Uh, but it was now that I do have that access, maybe I won't be as. You know, frustrated or yeah, uh, I have more responsibility, and I think when I have it, I'm, I am calmer about it because yeah. I know that yeah. uh, he he'll listen and uh, we can have a conversation about what happened. Is captaincy going to change you on or off the field? Yeah, look, as leader, like I've been in the leadership group for since I've been 24, 25, and uh, with Ireland and, and with Leinster, and uh, I've always wanted to keep getting better in that role. The same as any part of your game, kicking, passing, whatever. Uh, you want to keep improving and I've tried to improve my leadership skills because they are skills and trying to get you to know yourself a little bit better um, and even sometimes you talk about how you interact with the ref sometimes I'll look back at the game and go oh my god I, I didn't even know I was doing that you know like I do be, you not recognize yourself at times yeah not, not that I don't recognize myself yeah, but yeah, cool. you don't realize that you know you're standing over the ref you know so what yeah, I'm okay. actually what okay. I'm actually saying is yeah. is perfectly acceptable yeah um, so body language yeah exactly yeah. it's just about being realizing that I'm taller than the ref so <laughs> standing over them yeah but again I don't even know that that I'm doing that sometimes so learning that about yourself sure. is, is improving yourself and that and uh like I had a bad uh, experience as captain of Leinster, for example, then in Town Park, uh, okay. when the, the ref kept calling me to chat. But every time I went to chat to him and he was calling me over, the, the crowd were going crazy and they were booing, thinking that I was questioning. I was like having no arguments with him. Or, and I didn't even actually say anything, but yeah. I get criticised about, about that. So, look, there's going to be times where you can't win. Um, you'll be criticised. And, you know, you see that with someone like Owen, for example, yeah. with England, when, when things are winning and things are going well best leader in the world when things aren't going so well everything is scrutinized and, yep. and i know that's what it's going to be like i've always been had that level of scrutiny anyway over my career so um do you enjoy number. that no because <laughs> <laughs> some people use that to fuel them to, to fuel them to fuel the fire and prove people wrong but you're just not so bothered you're more focused on what you are and what you're about right yeah it's the guys around me you know if that you know, if they say to me, look, I think you need to do this bit better, well, then I'll listen, you know what I mean? But uh, like I said, I'm always trying to get better. Leadership is high on the agenda of that, uh, yeah. especially now that uh, I'm doing it with Ireland. But under Stewart and Leo and Leinster, um, we, we've had some you know, good lessons over the last couple of years, and I'll take them with me into, into this job now. You'd have met with Eddie Jones, of course, after the World Cup final with, with the leadership group. What conversations did you have? What did you learn from the experience out in Japan, which will enable you to be a better team for this uh, forthcoming Six Nations? Again, um, I think it's different for everyone. Okay. Um, I think uh, the, the experience as a whole was, was, a, was, a, was a fantastic one uh, and one that we, we all loved. Um, I think that was, that was clear from... from uh, from hopefully what people saw throughout the tournament, um, but uh, as far as what's happened since, uh, I think everybody will be in a different situation, and, and that's what we'll we'll have a chat about when we get together. We'll we'll get it all out there in the open and 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 get it sorted so that we can crack on with the rugby. I mean, both you guys played international rugby. 
you don't need any motivation when you've got that rose on your chest, I'm sure. But when you get to such a high like a World Cup final, then such a low losing a World Cup final, does it take a bit of time just to almost reset in your mind what you're doing it for, what you're driving for, what motivation you have going into a, a big tournament like the Six Nations? I'm not, not what I'm doing it for, not what, not what motivates me. It was, it was disappointing. Mm. Uh, it was very disappointing. Um, and you ask yourself a lot, a lot of questions about around that. Um, but we've had a lot abs happen since then, obviously. Um, uh, and and to, to get back, uh, I'd imagine it'd be the same, but I'm only speaking for myself, that getting back to your club and getting playing again is, is a big part a big part of uh, getting on with it because you can't you can't really have too much time thinking about everything else when you're preparing for a big game at a weekend. Um, and and since then I think we've accepted it and, and been able to hopefully put ourselves in a place to, to use it going forward. You were in camp last year for almost six months. You know, you develop incredible bonds. You said the World Cup was a brilliant tournament have you missed being part of this England group? Have you yeah. missed the lads? No, massively. I think um, you know it's only it's only really every four years that you you get together yeah. that amount of time, and I think this group uh, grew a lot over that time. Uh, and obviously, there's some fresh faces coming in now, and 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 people that are hopefully going to bring bring a lot to it. Uh, but we're going to have to work hard because we've not got the luxury of of yeah. however many months build up <laughs> yeah. into. We've got we've got a week. Um, and although we've put a lot of work in, which hopefully puts us in good stead, there's, I don't think we can assume uh, that that tightness is just going to stay the way it is. We've got we've to make sure we work at it and, and, and push on with it. Your own foul, the rugby player. Do you like to play rugby, train, work hard? So how much do you dislike having to sit down with the likes of us on days like today answering questions which are probably fairly uncomfortable in the first place uh, um, I probably used to be a, 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 a lot more uncomfortable with it um, <laughs> so you're enjoying it more? We uh, to I would say I'm yeah. enjoying it more I'd say, I'd say no, I'm, I'm, able to, I'm able to be a bit uh, I'm able to say what I think a bit more rather than just bat everything away right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, yeah I've, I've uh, I'm a, I'm a bit I'm a bit more open to it, but I won't I won't, I won't go as far as enjoying it. Yeah, it's pretty similar to what your dad said. I can imagine you two walking along the corridor here and just sort of rolling your eyes at each other as if to say, "Let's get this day over and done with." So you've not got a podcast coming out anytime soon, then? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. <laughs> okay, Faz, thanks for joining us. All the very best of luck. Cheers, Still thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks Cheers, very much. Thank you. How's you? How's the body? I haven't played a huge amount of rugby no, since no. since the World Cup. Um, no. What have you spent your time doing? Um, well, I obviously had a um, bit of an issue post World Cup. Um, I had time off, and uh, unfortunately, uh, it was extended a little bit over the Christmas period, which I was d disappointed about, in honesty, particularly with the way our season has gone. Um, really pleased to be able to feature uh, in the last couple of games. Um, Almost disappointed in a way to be leaving, you know, without a W and you know getting us back on track at the O's. But um, you know, on, on the flip side, it's a change, and I'm in a in, in an environment with um, a lot of change, um, new faces uh, again, like we said, management and players. Um, and you know, sometimes a, a change is as good as a rest, and, uh, and that's a, a, to be said for a lot of us. You're back in the hot seat again, as well as captain. Obviously, looking forward to Guinness Six Nations. How many times are we going to? How many more years are you going to keep coming back to these launches? Um, have you spoken to Wayne yet? Because I think he's probably <laughs> he's probably got a better handle on an answer for that. Me, but than a question me. about you. I mean, I remember we spoke about this before the World Cup. You said that you had an outside chance yeah. of getting to the World Cup. Yeah. You proved that wrong. Yeah. Fair play to you. Yeah. Um, but you know, we, we always talk about it. You're over 30, and everyone kind of gets a little bit twitchy. Yeah, just, just, just. I don't feel it. Well, <laughs> you know that, that's brilliant. Exactly. How are you feeling? What well, are your long-term goals? Well, this is the thing. With the initially, you know, go through the initial situation, we find ourselves in with the change in the management, the new players that have come into the squad um, off the back of a successful year last year. You know, I'm, go I'm going to be challenged by uh, new management. Um, we've got the vibrance and the energy of young players coming in, and you know, you you're thirsty for some more success. Um, with the reason why I keep going, I don't forget why I started. I think that's really important. I think, you know, I, I'm not, it's not, it sounds a bit of a cliche dancer, but, you know, when you're a kid, you want to run around and play rugby. And like, I've been able to do that for a long time. And yeah. if I wasn't enjoying that, um, I wouldn't be here. There's still obviously the off-field stuff that you deal with and certain situations at a domestic level. But ultimately, where, you know, you're still playing in a, in a green rectangle, chasing a ball about, um, you're just doing it at the top end, which is where you want to be. 
Does it feel slightly different for you guys going into Six Nations as Grand Slam champions? Uh, no, I've done it before. Um, <laughs> oh, a few times. humble brag. No, but, no, <laughs> humble but I've, brag. I've done it before a few times, and it's not it's not a, a micro humble brag. Is it easier to win something the f- one one time or the second time? You know, and that, that's the, the question we'll be asking ourselves. And we're, we're not going in as Grand Slam champions. We're going in as Wayne Pivac's new Wales squad. Um, other, otherwise, you, you spend your, your time looking over your shoulder, sitting on your heels, and you know, rubbing your hands, which is which isn't the case for this squad. Barbos game's a unique game, mm. but did we get an insight into what Wales and how Wales are going to play the Six Nations? Um, I think so. I think there was, um, you know, there was a, a, a definite ability. Um, shift or an application shift in the fact that we're going to try and potentially use the ball more I think Wayne's come out and said he's going to build on the foundations that are already there if something's not broken he's not overly going to try and do too much or fix it but again we go to the levels that we're trying to operate at if you can squeeze one or two percent out of uh, individuals across the board then you know it's easier to change the application of how we want to play potentially Um, but ultimately it's still a direct brand of rugby Um, we just you know, we need to explore what we can do with the ball potentially a bit more, and you know that's gonna that's gonna grow and evolve um, as we as we go through the campaign and beyond. I know that it's not meant to come across with any disrespect to Italy, but having Italy at home, especially that home factor the first weekend, first for Wayne Pivac, for the new players, that's got to be a nice way to start as opposed to being on the road at Ireland well, or Twickenham or France. It, it depends on your perspective again. Um, from our point of view, um, Italy can sometimes be the most dangerous team in the competition because you don't necessarily, they're akin to a French side sometimes in the fact of you don't really know what you're going to get. Um, they've always got a um, strong set piece. Um, you know, uh, Franco, when he was coaching um, other, other uh, you know, Treviso or other teams, they always have a habit of using the ball or trying to be expansive. So we're, we're probably facing uh, a, a team with a new coach, um, going to play the ball a lot, got a lot to prove, always have done, uh, with arguably one of the best packs in the competition. So, you know, it, again, it's, it depends on perceptions. Good man. Thanks for joining us again and all the very best of luck. Good to chat no, as ever. Thanks, Cheers, Adam. Definitely good luck to you today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough from us. I think it's time to hear it from the horse's mouth. Let's bring in Scotland's new captain, Stuart Hogg. Welcome. How are you guys? You all right? How's it feeling today? That's a wee bit nerve wracking. Sound a bit different. Actually, but are you Oh, yeah. I, I am a bit nervous. Yeah, look, I've never been in a, a position to captain a side before. But I'm very much looking forward to the challenge. Um, you know, I'm always willing to learn, looking to improve, and now I have to be uh, kind of semi-sensible, don't I? Learn and looking to improve. And I genuinely think that you've become Scotland captain because of the mistakes you've made, the way in which you've been able to learn and improve yourself. And I think that's probably best illustrated by looking at the plugs that you've had in your hair. Um, you know, because I have you, no idea what you're talking about. There you've go. understood some weaknesses, and you've you've just, you've just tried to. Getting better. What's this? Is this just come and pick on Hoggy or what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was actually, I think it was the first thing Alan Wynn asked me about this morning. Uh, not how am I doing, how's the family? Mate, your lid's looking strong, is what he was saying. It is looking um, good. Yeah, so we're getting there, mate. Look, we've obviously had a bit of work done um, a couple of times. Have you admitted it? Yes, mate. Okay, look, cool. Look, it's it's yeah. clear and obvious, but. Yeah. Um, Shoulder to the head, it's, it's clear and obvious. Mate, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's clear and obvious, mate. It's a red card. No, no mitigating <laughs> rest, factors. Yeah, yeah. Clear red, it's off. Um, but, but look, it's uh, I bit the bullet. I had, had it done and you know, I took a little bit of stick along the way, but um, I've got a strong lid now, so who cares? You do. In <laughs> fairness, the worst part of it was having it and then you put bleach in it. Yeah, and then got in trouble because I killed all the roots off again. It so, fell out. Um, yeah, I did it, have, had, it, had it redone, which was... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was a little bit painful, but... Uh, you didn't pay for it, though. Um, <laughs> He's nodding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, where would you want me to go? Then, <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk rugby? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Should we talk rugby? Were you, did it take you by surprise, being asked to captain the side? I asked. Um, I came you back, asked? Yeah, I came after, back after the World Cup and had a, had a conversation with Gregor. Um, asked about his thoughts on leadership going forward. Uh, and said that I'd like to be captain. I'd like to have the opportunity to lead this team and, and try and take us forward. Um, I'm incredibly passionate about playing for Scotland. I'm incredibly passionate about playing rugby and I want to make a difference. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to the challenge and extremely grateful and honoured to be given an opportunity. Um, you know, I think that the captains that have been before me, like Sir Greg Laidlaw, Al Kellogg, John Barkley, 
uh, and Stuart McAnally have done terrific yep. jobs. Um, but I want to put my mark on it now. And as I say, I, I asked to, to be given an opportunity and extremely grateful now to, to be in this position. I'm buying into this. You know, the way in which you speak with passion, with honesty, hashtag as one. I've always been that way. We've spoken about it. <laughs> exactly. But what kind of captain do you think you'll be? Pass. That's something I'm going to have to learn uh, as we go along. Th some things I'll not get right. Some things hopefully will, will be spot on. But again, I'm always looking to, to learn. I'm new to the captaincy side of things. There will be a little bit added pressure on me, but that's the pressure I put on myself. Um, I'm old enough now and ugly enough now to realise that pressure comes with the game and you've just got to, to bounce through it. If I make a mistake, you bounce through it, you go on with your next job and everybody's going to be the same. As I say, I want boys to play with confidence and mistakes will happen. Bounce through them, get on with our next job and, and make sure that we're not in a position where we're making the same mistakes time and time again. Um, and enjoy it. Enjoy the, the opportunity to lead. Enjoy the, the chance to, to take this team forward. Um, we're here to win test matches, we're here to have fun, but ultimately we're here to inspire our nation and we're going to do our utmost to make sure that happens. I'll tell you what, I hope every player that plays for Scotland in the Six Nations are as passionate and as honest and as excited as how you're making me because, yeah, I'm excited to see what this new era of Scottish rugby will look like under your captaincy. Stuart Hogg, thanks for joining us and all the very best of luck. Thank you, guys. Much appreciated. Thanks, Stuart. Cheers, Cheers,